I give Elon Musk a ton of credit for spending a whopping, what was it, $52 billion? I told you that deal will go through. It's pretty hard once you say you're going to buy something. Delaware courts don't take too well to you not buying it, but I I'm glad that he bought it. X, as it's officially known, you can follow me there, Trish underscore Regan. I think it's wonderful that Elon got this and that he is now enabling people to really speak freely. And he's out there himself calling out the insanity. I mean, one of the most insane companies of all is Disney. Disney, I used to love Disney. We had like an annual pilgrimage to Disney as a kid. I thought it was like the best place ever. We would drive down all the way from New Hampshire to Florida. And this was in the days before you had iPads or iPhones or anything else, right? So uh, it, was, it was a fun, fun trip, fun family memories. And it was a big deal, like going to Disney and Disney represented so much and Disney was all American and great family fun. And it's departed from that significantly. And you know what? So has its consumer base. Consumers are like, well, I don't like this anymore. Why do I need to go pay this much? When you're gonna shove a political agenda down my throat at the theme park. And by the way, you know, there's these giant lines and your rides don't work. Or why do I have to pay this much to go see this movie? I just canceled my Disney, by the way, subscription. I, I actually didn't even realize I still had it. They charge like once a year, they get you on that stuff. They're like, why, why do I want Disney Plus? I don't need this, right? Because I don't need their agenda being thrown in my face every day. Elon Musk, he has, he's hit on this. He's hit on this directly. In fact, he just spoke. You got to hear it. He, he just spoke about this issue. Elon was not holding back. He's like, he's, he's out to get, by the way, he, he had a few F-bombs, remember, for Bob Iger, who's now the CEO of Disney. He, he's not taken too kindly to Iger. And he makes the point that this is a company that actually is being ruined from a financial standpoint because of its insane wokeness. Let's listen to him. We're going to fight the woke mind virus then the woke, woke mind virus will fight back. And unfortunately, Disney is deeply infected with, with the woke mind virus. In fact, if you ask an AI, what is the most woke company on earth? It's Disney. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. And the wokeness doesn't help but, the company and, at all. And, and you have to say, There's what people would, clapping in that I mean, crowd. I, I guess they, they like that. But it, you Disney look at the stock price. Hey, it's trading at half of where it was just five years ago. It's ridiculous. I mean, that's a great iconic American brand. So in walks Nelson Peltz, who's a big time investor, and he's trying to, you know, muscle in. By the way, I think he's kind of more conservative than he is liberal. So that's probably a good thing. And he's like using his sharp elbows to try and get in there on the board and get a bunch of board seats to try and change things. Because when you lose reportedly a billion dollars on your last four flop films, you're clearly out of touch with your audience. They're so out of touch with their audience, they actually had to bring it up in an annual report recently. In late September, they admitted, you know, sometimes our audience doesn't understand where we're coming from. Okay, guys, then you know what? Maybe that's time to kind of get back to your roots and be what you were. Otherwise, that stock price is going to go down even further. I mean, you got other issues too. The reality is things are changing really quick in the media business, as we all know, which is why I'm so happy to have you here. I'm so pleased that you guys are here. Please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the likes, share the clips, share the show. It all, every little bit counts. So thank you for that. We are live right now on YouTube, on Facebook, and on Rumble. And again, um, I am seeing some new names here. So welcome, uh, Rock. Good to have you here. Uh, the good Billy, good to see you as well, and Don. So I, I do appreciate all of your support and want to encourage you. Abel's back with us as well, too. Um, I know, Abel, you are not a fan of Disney. You've brought that up quite a bit, and uh, you're right to, to be very cautious on this. I mean, I look at it as a stock right now, and I, I'm just sort of perplexed as to why they haven't been able to realize more value. And I think it's because they just have a management structure that has hired so many woke people and you get like the whole place filled with all these woke kids and everybody has a sort of idea of what they want the world to be and that's more important to them don't forget where they're coming out of the harvard princeton yales of the world right harvard especially they're coming out of these institutions that have just brainwashed them and now they're going to work and they're not making a lot of money and they got to pay all these you know debts back theoretically maybe unless Biden has anything to do with it. <laughs> How about that?
the truck driver paying for the Harvard kid. I love that, right? Gosh, it's really, it's really pathetic. But anyway, the point being that you have a whole cast, to use a Disney word, of crew members there at Disney that really don't subscribe to the Disney that was. Instead, they're trying to create something new, and they're passionate about that. They're not passionate about making money. They probably don't even care about it. And so the interests are not well aligned. And I don't know how you change the entire company. It's that big. Maybe you spin off some parts. That's an idea. Maybe the parks business gets bought by someone else. I mean, it's crazy to think, right? Because Disney, the brand, is so important and so valuable. Or not. Maybe it's not anymore. I think you got to divide and conquer. And you can't be everything to everyone. And so Disney, maybe the smartest thing is to, you know, just start over because I don't know how you deal with an entire team of people so caught up in this woke ideology that they can't get out of their own way. So kudos to Elon for noticing that one.